Sunroom is a great addition to any house. If you're thinking of adding a sunroom to your house and you want to know something about a DIY or go to a, a vendor to bring you a very nice project, then stick around. I will discuss with you my experience. First disclaimer. Here our project, uh, we have a 24, yes, 24 by 16 uh, deck and standing on a three piles of a concrete piles and on the other side on the house. And um, we have a, a relatively nice place and it's far away from this uh, property line. The only problem we have is the height is about eight feet now from the uh, deck to this edge and this would not give us any room to have a slope in our uh, roof so as you can see we have a lot of snow in winter we live in calgary alberta and uh, we have a very nice summer but also we have uh, sometimes very high uh, wind sometimes we have uh, snow as you can see so so uh, what we did is that we went to a uh, first vendor to give us a coat and the vendor gave us a nice coat for uh, a completely uh, sunroom made of uh, windows. So uh, the uh, the roof is made of uh, glass, the size windows, and you can see here one, two, three window on the side and this side because it's close to the property line. He said that we may uh, be able to put only one window. So uh, as you can see, you go from the house by stairs and go to the uh, floor of the sunroom. The design is based on a footage made of uh, concrete and then uh, probably uh, uh, wooden beams. And then you have the structure. And the cost of this project based on this, uh, this design is about 105,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, of course, he mentioned it's a three season, but he said it's very well insulated and so on. So we went to another vendor to see what is going on there. And the other vendor gave us something like this, which is a built in a roof and uh, some sides made of uh, cladding of uh, aluminum with uh, a foam inside two inches or three inches. And the top are made uh, the top side is made of uh, windows now uh, in this case we asked him what is the uh, these the all of those things in the middle is like the uh, structure here is made of aluminum cross section but the problem i found that all those cross section are made of aluminum and they are empty there is no insulation inside so uh, this uh, vendor gave us a coat of a 70 southern uh, based on uh, using the existing deck. So uh, so this is from the vendor perspective. So what is from the uh, documentation and the permit, you can get it from your city. So in, in, uh, in general, we have something we call it three season and four season. The three season, they always tell you, you can enjoy it all the year. And the four season, it's you can use it all the year round. Most of the season, does it mean, what, what does it mean? It is not something you can actually put your finger on it and say, yes, it's uh, two, three months, uh, I will enjoy it, or two, three months, I will not enjoy it. But from documentation and the permit and uh, the uh, codes, it's completely different thing. So if you talk to a vendor, ask him if he can provide you with four season approved uh, deck or approved sunroof because it's completely different. As you can see here, the three season, they consider it a closed patio and you could not and you should not heat it, it based on the document. Of course, nobody will stop you from heating it if you would like, but this is will not be according to the code or the permit you received and it's, it's not covered by your insurance if you insured your house. Now, four season on the other part is considered as a living area. And as it's a living area in Alberta, you have to comply with section, section 9.36 of energy efficient uh, buildings. On top of that, you need to have a smoke and a CO sensor. Maybe you need it, maybe you not, based on the design. And also uh, you are allowed to heat and cool the system and connect it to the heating and cooling system of your house. 
In the closed path, you, uh, you need some electric stuff and, uh, the same, exactly the same in the four season. And they are all exactly the same in the windows and, uh, siding type. Now, if you look at your house and you uh, assume this red box is your sunroom, proposed sunroom, and in this first uh, scenario here, you have it's one wall facing the property line. So uh, this wall is considered as a continuation of your house, and the allowed windows here is part of the allowed windows percentage in your house. Now here, because it is a little bit down and further from the property line, it may have a different percentage as we can see. Now, how far you are from your property line? This is again, uh, this is a code in Alberta, uh, which is in general in Canada. If you are a 40 centimeter off the uh, property line, you are not allowed to have any opening at all and your cladding should be non-compostable, meaning it should be stucco or uh, stone. Now, if you between uh, 0.4 and 1.2 meter, you are allowed only to have a 7%. So if your existing house has a windows which is more than 7%, which has been built on an older a code, then probably you will not be able to add any windows to your sunroom. If you are uh, between 1.2 to 2, you are allowed to 11%. And if you are uh, more than 2 meter from the property line, there is no limitation. You can have all the sides made of windows. Again, uh, the cladding, you uh, have no issues if you are more than the 0.4 meter. This is more uh, information you need if you need to build your own sunroom or you need to study what is required from your sunroom and your design. Uh, I will put this in the description down, but you can copy it and paste it. Now, when I went to say, oh, no, I, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do DIY sunroom. I'm going to build it. So I went to one of the uh, companies uh, and uh, they made me the design. They presented to the uh, the city, city of Calgary, and then I received the permit. When I looked at the permit, I was astonished. I was, you know, so mad because what I found is they approved the building as the new sunroom as a closed patio. It's not four season as I agreed with the guy. And I have this close, no space heating. I cannot connect it to the house. And the guy told me, oh, you can, you can do that. No problem. You can put a heater. And I said, no, because if I put a heater, I cannot really, if something wrong, I cannot claim anything. The insurance company can come back and say, well, you use it different than the permit allow you to do. So what I did is I went to another company to solve this problem. And on top of that, he did some, the first company did a lot of mistakes, small, smallest mistakes, which if you look at this uh, roof, he gave me uh, the, the design as he need, I can use architecture shingles. While my slope is 1.5, uh, to 12. So now I looked at all the asphalt shingles and the bare minimum that is absolute minimum is a slope of two. I cannot use any asphalt shingles. So I went to another company. This company is called AERZ Consulting Inc. And um, I'm not associated with this company, but I'm just giving you the information. If you'd like to contact them, please do. What they did is they looked at the design. They have to review everything. They reviewed the structure. They reviewed the roof, loading, and every, all of these things. And then they calculated the uh, wall and roof and floor insulation and uh, make sure that it's matching the design requirement by the code. And on top of that, they have to do uh, something called energy efficiency calculation. Now, the energy a calculation is uh, uh, calculate how much energy you need to add it to this place to uh, make it a comfortable based on the code. So there is a design limitation. There is a requirement to have an efficient building. You have to meet it. So they did this and they gave me the documentation to give it to the city. So I got from the city the design. Everything went fine and it's approved. And now I have very nice 
uh, sunroom. So let's go with a DIY. I started with having all the wood uh, needed and I used all um, everything in the, uh, as a pressure pressure treated wood in the flooring. So anything which is from the uh, floor down is uh, pressure treated wood. So you can see now I started with taking all the tree shrubs and the uh, around the, the deck and um, taking the deck down. Uh, of course, it was a challenging taking all the uh, those trees down. I have to use every hand I can. Uh, my kids, my daughters, and my son and my son and my son in law all came give me a hand to take all those stumps out. It was nice, very nice uh, activity for all the family. And uh, you can see here when we took the the deck down. I could see there is a lot of damage in this uh, wood and we have to just uh, send it to the dump. After that, I started to put the uh, places for these crew piles and I asked another company to come and make me uh, the screw piles. Now, uh, I could do it uh, concrete and it would be saving a lot of money because if I did those uh, piles from concrete, it could cost me about $800. But as uh, a screw piles, it cost me about $25, $2,600. But also you have to ask them to give you the report. The report you needed for the city, of course. Uh, this was a very nice uh, experience. They came and uh, installed the eight screw piles and it's uh, adjustable screw piles. The reason uh, this is my first project and I was thinking of I, I needed to have it adjustable. But frankly speaking, if you have a good company, you don't need to have a adjustable uh, head. You can use the standard one. Now, when I did this, I we welded the uh, after we adjust all of things, we welded them. So uh, the lifting, well, there is no uh, possibility of lifting. Of course, you have to structure uh, screws to hold your all your uh, joist and your. Uh, if you're going to use the trusses, you need to hold it to the screw piles. Uh, after putting the uh, cross beam here, it's three, uh, three, uh, two by ten. And these, as you can see, two of them. And then I put the all those guys here. The only thing I will let you uh, check before you put them is to measure the size, size of each side. Because some of them actually, they are different. This side, then this side, about two millimeter or three. Sometimes you will find about five millimeter between one and the second. So you need to uh, um, arrange them to have, let's say, all the similar size, sizes in the one the, uh, place. And also, it, let's say, uh, if you got one or two millimeters, you can put them beside each other so you wouldn't uh, see the difference when you put your flooring. After I did this, I put the cross beams here. And uh, those crosses will help you to put them into places. Of course, on the other side, you have every 16 uh, inch uh, one of those uh, nice uh, uh, bolts, which is actually will held on and carry your weight. Of course, you need to get all those uh, extra stuff, which is will hold your uh, structure well to your uh, uh, ledges here. Uh, you can see also uh, lifting, preventing lifting, all those, uh, you have to put them inside. After I did this, I put uh, plywood to cover it from the bottom. The reason is that there is no much space, crawling space underneath, so I will not be able to go down and fill the insulation from the bottom, which is will be ideal, but I have to put it from the top. So uh, to put it from the top, I put those plywood is again, it's a pressure treated plywood so I can fill it from the top. After I put this, I spray painted it, sorry, spray foam and the spray foam about two uh, inches. Uh, of course, this will prevent any air circulation in, in here and also add a lot to the insulation. Then I added the uh, insulation pad, fiber 
glass and then I put three quarter uh, plywood on top of that. Uh, one of the uh, walls here you can see the sides I put the sides first and then I put the uh, front now the problem I have here is as you can see the uh, there is a pay uh, bay window here and uh, bay door and the this is not straight so I cannot uh, construct this on this side so I have to construct it on that side and move it around and then lift it up and push it in so it's a little bit of maneuver you have to think about it when you build your walls here uh, as you can see here the front I put I made first the sides this side right and left and I then I did the the front the front I made it into two pieces so I can lift it easily so I uh, did it in two sections as you can see all the uh, between the uh, studs I made uh, some kind of uh, 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 close all the gaps with uh, ceiling or uh, tape duct tape so just to, make, to reduce the amount of air circulation and air leakage. Rafters, you, after you put the rafters, you make sure that you put those uh, stuff to prevent it from lifting with the high wind. Uh, this is the connection to the house. The ledger here is partly on the house, part on two sides. And then uh, all the rafter, you have the proper uh, uh, stuff which is actually needed uh, to lift them try to put screws or uh, bolts or something in each or nails sorry nails or screws uh, and, and that should be approved uh, nails and and there's all of those uh, holes now I removed a part of the stacco and I found that uh, the paper damage and I as you can see I insulated with the flexible rubber before I put a new uh, uh, paper again, filled paper. And this is the roof. Uh, after I finish this, I uh, closed all the gaps between the uh, uh, roof here with uh, fiberglass and cement, uh, pitchment cement, and then I added the uh, one layer of a primer. Uh, the primer is again uh, made from a pitchman or a light pitchman which is also will help in uh, isolate and uh, make a nice uh, water proofing system as you can see here this is the uh, new rafter and this is the uh, new uh, roof which is um, again uh, on the existing roof this is the existing roof with existing trusses uh, I used GAF wizard watch uh, and uh, Liberty cap sheets and uh, you can see that you extend the uh, weather watch underneath the existing felt paper so the shingle actually uh, goes on top of that and uh, extend to the uh, cap sheet so all the uh, water of any water coming in here from rain or snow it go uh, all the way down and um, away from the structure uh, you can see here, here it's how it's done. Uh, this is my shingle and this is my cap sheet, uh, well done and, uh, there is no leak, nothing. Uh, this is after a uh, nice rain and, uh, you can see the sun comes up and everything is dry and very nice. And as you can see here, all this snow, which is normally comes in the winter is on the roof. Everything went fine. Uh, of course, once I finished the, the roof, I started to go on the sides because the winter was coming and I needed to uh, work inside. So I tried to close everything before winter is coming and uh, I catch it part of the winter uh, inside. So you can see here, this is a blue skin and I added the windows and the soffit as well and uh, make sure that you uh, properly uh, make sure properly that you have the blue skin all over the place so you don't have any leak from the uh, weather in and uh, water or rain to your uh, structure one of the issues you need to make sure that you look at it is the connection between this wall and existing i uh, used a lot of uh, insulation uh, sealant in between so no air movement from outside 
through all those tiny gaps here and there. Once I finished the outer, uh, the windows and everything, I started to work inside and uh, inside you can do all your um, electric stuff. And the only thing I needed to mention here is that when you go in the sunroom, you need a three-way switch because when I go from the sunroom to the house, this is two stairs. So you need, according to the code, a three-way switch here and a three-way switch there. Even if the code does not uh, ask you to do it, it's a very good idea because if you go uh, from the house inside, you need to be able to turn the light in the sunroom and on and off from this side. And also when you go from coming or going out from the door, you need to close uh, the, the lights as well. Now for the outlets, the code uh, asks you to add an outlet each about three meter or so. Uh, this is one thing, but also if you are planning to use uh, electric curtain or uh, stuff like that, or you have uh, in this area, I will have the, my TV. You may add extra uh, socket or move them around to match all those needs. Now from in the outside, you need uh, to use these um, ground fault uh, outlets. So the, in the outlet, in the outside, they are different than the outlet on the inside. Uh, the outlet and the outside, they have to be on a ground fault uh, circuit breaker. The inside, they have to be on uh, what they call it now, uh, GAF, which is a ground fault and uh, spark uh, detecting and tripping uh, a circuit breaker. So you have to look at the code in your city to work within the code. Once I did this, I started to work on the roof. As you can see, it is a vented roof and I added the insulation after that. Uh, then the membrane, the uh, barriers and uh, the walls. The walls, what I did here is I spray foam the walls again to prevent any uh, air movement. Uh, air movement, air leaks, that's all will be stopped and also it will isolate and insulate my uh, interior from the outside as you can see here then I added the uh, fiberglass and then again the uh, barrier the uh, humidity barrier and uh, again based on the code you have to look at the code in your city and uh, you work around it from outside I added uh, vinyl I the the color is not exactly as the stacco but it's matching it and it's Blending in, it's uh, nice, no problem. Here, as you can see from the outside, the after I finished all the vinyl siding, I added a skirt of uh, cedar wood and stained it with a uh, good stain to uh, prevent it from the element, to protect it from the element. And as you can see here, I uh, maintained the out uh, outdoor uh, outlet, which is on a, se a separate. Uh, circuit breaker and also I added uh, something for the rain sensor so I can actually I don't have to turn my uh, sprinkler on and off if it is rained I added uh, a little bit of uh, sensor here a motion sensor so it turn on and off by itself so we can see starting step by step I finished this from outside uh, this when I was working from the inside and this is a drywall and uh, the circuit uh, here you can see in the my skylights is here and uh, from inside I did the uh, vinyl and the theme was white and green and the uh, sunroom so this was my wife and I agreed to have it in those two colors in general. So we decided to use the uh, vinyl, the square vinyl, the old, old school vinyl. The only thing is, uh, if you're thinking of having it in, uh, in a cold weather like in Canada, uh, you may need to add uh, some rug or something because in, in when it is minus 15 outside, minus 20 outside, uh, still the floor because there is a space between the 
floor and uh, the open air so it's it's kind of cold but but it's not very cold but but again if, if you have a rug or something it would be very nice uh, don't make it from uh, ceramic material because you will feel it is a lot of cold but of course if the sunroom is in the south while you have a lot of sun then yes go ahead and use ceramic or uh, porcelain or this kind of stuff it will feel more uh, uh, nice and cold and uh, in, in the summer uh, in general this is what we did and uh, I think uh, it went the project went well now you may ask how much it cost me it cost us about in the range of about 30 to 35,000 and uh, the reason we could save a lot of money but we decided like say at uh, the windows we have a three pan windows which is a lot of extra so you we added a little bit of extra money and a lot of spaces just to make sure it's it's uh, comfortable and we will enjoy it as you can see we uh, we did the project one less than one third of the uh, coat quoted price but of course it took us about uh, six uh, months and I did it with the help of my son uh, and uh, that's only uh, help I get but of course you can ask people to come and help you and that will even uh, make the time uh, shorter and the project maybe will be a uh, much nicer I uh, thank you for watching and if you have any um, question please let me know you can uh, just leave it in the comment below. Thanks and see you in next video. Bye-bye.